Hello everyone, welcome to this series of tutorials that I'm going to run weekly on stop motion animation. So I'm going to take you through the complete basics, starting with the equipment list for a high-tech specification. Now I say high-tech, but this is still on a budget if you wanted to make a real full-length animation. And if you want to have a low-tech specification, I'm also going to make a series of videos on an iPad and a phone. And we're going to see whether we can get the same results from an iPad to using a DSLR camera. So I'm going to take you through the complete basics of the equipment list and using the software as well. So without further ado, let's get into the equipment for high-tech. The camera I use is the Canon 550D, or known as the T2i in America, and I highly recommend a Canon DSLR camera as they are compatible with the industry-leading stop-motion software Dragonframe. The lens I use is a 17 to 85 mm lens, which offers both wide-angle and close-up telephoto shots. You don't need this specific model of camera, but it is important to have a camera that has manual settings. The other thing you may need is a AC adapter. You can use the battery that was supplied with the camera, or you can attach an AC adapter, which allows you to power on the camera from the mains. Simply plug it in, switch it on, and turn on the camera. It is also important to have a camera with a live view, which means that you can see exactly what is being depicted through the lens. The lens itself should be set to manual focus and the stabilizer should be turned off. Now, of course, the main event, you need a tripod. Now, try and get a tripod that is very stable. You don't want to go too cheap with the, a tripod. You do want to make sure that you are buying at least a decent quality tripod. You don't want your camera to move whilst you're taking your pictures for your stop motion animation. Now, my two main lights are two soft boxes. And I use these to fill in as much light as possible within my scene. So I use these two soft boxes, a main light and a desk lamp. The brand I'm using here is the Raleno and you can get two of these online fairly cheap. And it's fantastic again, just to fill in as much light as possible within your scene. It's also important to cut out as much light as possible, so close those blinds. And you can use your overhead light as long as there's no flicker. And I tend to use a smart light, which enables me to change the color of my scene just by using an app. So it's fantastic at controlling the light that I want within my scene. And as you can see, the results look much better with the overhead light, the two soft boxes, and a desk lamp. Moving on to the green screen, I use a fabric green screen which you can fold out and it's rather large. But what you can use is just a rolled up piece of green paper. It does the exact same job. And the great thing about paper is you can draw guidelines on the paper so you can ensure that your character doesn't move out of frame. Moving on to the figures, I have some 8 inch Star Trek figures here. And you need to just make sure that you've got a figure that is poseable. Okay, so you can either make this yourself or get a figure that is poseable and ideally all of the joints need to be able to move. Here's a bit of robot chicken as an example. Uh, uh, 2300 hours, time for the night crew to relieve us. <laughs> Did somebody order a party grab? <laughs> 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 Fantastic. Now those characters are held up by things called helping hands and this just helps you to hold up your model otherwise they will fall over. So you can use these clips and move them into place and then attach it to your character so that they don't fall. So we can see here we've got the front and the back and these will need to be edited out in Photoshop or After Effects afterwards. So if you need any kind of complicated movements or poses, then you can do this by using the helping hands. 
So when you put all of this together, you can create a pretty good setup. So here is my current setup and I've put the green screen down. So I've got the cloth over the table. I have my green card uh, directly on top of the table and it's just going up onto the wall. I have my lamp, which I can position and place that where I need to add an extra light. I also have my trusty little softbox. I've only got one set up at the moment, but ideally I would need to, to add a little bit more light, but we can see I can move this around and that's going to affect how much light is going to be on my scene. So we can see if I just zoom in here on my character, if I move my softbox, we're seeing less light and I can use the light as a bounce light directly off this wall. Okay, so I can move this exactly where I need it. And I have my blue light set up. Again, that is a smart light and I can use the app and change the color of the light as I so wish. So moving on to Dragon Frame, I've currently got the camera set up to the battery pack, which is plugged into the wall and I have Dragon Frame set up. So as I press the enter key, it's going to take a photograph. So if I just move my model very slightly and just move the hand, we can see on the screen again, if I press enter, I can keep going backwards and forwards and I'm using those helping hands just to keep the model in place and back to Dragon Frame and I can press enter. So when I go ahead and press play, we can see that our character starts to move. Now you do see a little bit of a flicker because I've moved my light. And that's why it's so important to keep your lights in place, okay? Never move your lights. And this is why I said earlier, you need to have a tripod that's quite sturdy and you don't want it to move, okay? Because that camera has to stay in the right spot at least if you're recording something all within one frame. So you would need to storyboard your idea because if you wanted to move your camera angle, you can move it then, but you need to make sure that you are using a different frame. Same with the lights. The lights need to stay in place. Otherwise you're going to see a lot of flicker in your animation. Also with the blinds, now my blinds aren't completely blackout. I still have a bit of light here. I usually animate at night because it's much easier to uh, handle the light manually instead of dealing with sunlight. But if you can, try and block out as much as natural light as possible. You don't want that within your scene. So I hope this helps. I wanted to just for today show you my setup and then we're gonna move into some tutorials with this setup on dragon frame okay this is the high tech or semi high tech this isn't too expensive um, but on a budget if you wanted to use a phone or an ipad then i'm also going to show you that option soon as well so again i hope that helped and i will see you soon take care bye